Hi everyone, I'm Josh Centaur from the NCAA and today we're going to learn a little bit about the rules changes in NCAA basketball. On my far right is the NCAA Secretary Rules Editor for Men's Basketball, Ed Billick. Ed was the head basketball coach at Springfield College for 25 years, went on to become the Athletics Director and has been with the NCAA Rules uh, Committee for 24 years. And right here on my right is Debbie Williamson who is the Secretary Rules Editor for Women's Basketball, was on the first ever NCAA Championship team for Women's Basketball, Louisiana Tech, went on to a coach and referee and has now been with the committee for two years. First thing that we want to do today guys is talk a little bit about last year. I know we're in this year but we want to talk about a, a big change from last year about the three-point line and Ed I'm gonna have you review that for our viewers at home. Yeah uh, Josh the three-point line for men for the next season will move out a distance of 20 feet 9 inches from the center of the basket. What that means is that that was after extensive amount of research and what that means now that we will have two lines, one at a distance of 19 feet 9 inches, which will be the women's line, and the men's line, which will be at 20 feet 9 inches. Those two lines have to be contrasting in color. They've got to be two solid 2-inch two lines, and there can be no embellishment in between the two lines, an embellishment such as a band to, to use as an example. So teams, men's and women's basketball, often play on the same court. So Debbie, they're gonna, the women's line will be there in a different color, the men's line will be a foot back. Is that exactly what we're going to see? That's correct. And what we're recommending, and it's not in the rules, but what we're recommending is that the women's line be the same color as the lane lines, just to make it easier uh, for officials. The women's officials really probably won't have as the same decisions to make because if a female player is behind either three-point line, it, it's a three-point three attempt. Uh, but the fact that the lines need to be contrasting in color uh, will be very important to those men's officials that have to determine which line um, is three for guys. Well, I want to stay with you here. One of the big rules changes this year had to do with uniforms and, and the color of the uniforms that home teams wear. Can you mm -hmm. explain that? Well, right now what we've done is we've so, uh, formed a joint subcommittee. Um, members from Ed's committee or from the men's committee and members from the women's committee will study the uniform rule as a whole throughout the year and submit any proposed changes. There's a desire, it appears, on the part of student athletes and teams and manufacturers that uh, the uniform rule be loosened just a little to provide more design and creativity and so the committees are looking at where can we do this and still preserve the integrity of the uniform and the integrity of the number. So the only rules change that we made yesterday as in both committees is currently the rules say that teams shall wear contrasting colors. Uh, and the change is that in the past, it was only a recommendation that home teams wear light and visiting teams wear dark, but the rules change will require that home teams wear light, not white, but light. So it'll be a requirement that home teams wear light and visiting teams wear dark. And just to elaborate, we've seen in the past that sometimes teams will be wearing similar colors, maybe a black and a burgundy, and mm -hmm. it's hard to differentiate. Well, again, because it was a suggestion or a recommendation, the rules language said that the home team should wear light. The home team really had the prerogative to wear black mm -hmm. if they wanted to. And let's say a visiting team showed up with black because, again, it was a recommendation, then we have a problem um, because not very many teams communicate on what color uniforms they're going to be wearing. There's always the assumption that the home team would be in a lighter color uniform. So we had several instances throughout the year where this was a problem and um, felt like that it would be a minor change and something that would go back to the traditions that were kept in the past where the home teams um, should or the home teams would be required to wear light. Okay, well that's a rule for both committees. Ed, you want to add yeah, something? The only thing I would add to that, Debbie did an excellent job. The only thing, that will be an alterable rule if uh, by mutual consent by two institutions. That's and, the only And thing. I would say one, one example where that may need to happen is in tournament play, where you may be um, in, a, in a home team bracket, but the way the tournament ends up, you maybe can't get your uniforms cleaned or in lower uh, level games, a lot of times conferences have policies that don't require those same things. So where Ed's correct, and thanks for that, right. where there's a mutual agreement, that rule can be altered. And another reason is um, 
Think Pink or Week or other special uh, occasions where team, home teams want to uh, celebrate something, then they would be able to alter that rule to be able to still be in compliance and still be able to draw attention to whatever the cause may be. Okay, and as we said, this applies to both the men's and the women's game. Now, Ed, I want to yes, go to the men's game uh, for, for a couple of minutes. One of the rules changes that uh, we saw had to do with technical fouls. Can you elaborate for our viewers? Well, we really haven't changed the technical foul rule, but what we did is we reorganized technical fouls, especially focusing on those that dealt with unsportsmanlike acts. Any unsportsmanlike technical foul will carry with it the most severe penalty. Any other technical foul infraction will carry with it a lesser penalty. What are the types of things that might uh, all right. characterize if, unsportsmanlike? Unsportsmanlike is if a player taunts, baits, or if there's any kind of swearing, uh, if, he, if there's any kind of gestures that uh, may evoke uh, undesirable reactions, those would be uns examples of unsportsmanlike acts. Now those unsportsmanlike acts will carry a penalty of two shots, uh, it will count towards disqualification, it will count toward the bonus, and it will also count toward ejection. Any other technical foul will only, their two shots will be applied, and it will only count towards ejection. And I know there was also a rule change with regard to goaltending. Yeah, all we've done is added a new article to our goaltending section. And what we've said is if the entire ball is above the ring and contacts the backboard, it is considered to be on its downward flight. In such a case, if the ball is touched by a player, it is goaltending. It will be a goaltending infraction. Okay, and, and now there are a lot of uh, rules changes that take place. These are just three of the major ones. So, Debbie, can you elaborate on just a couple others that uh, folks might find of interest? I think the only other one, and again, it applies to both of uh, women's and men's basketball, is that in the 09-10 season, uh, teams will be required to have breakaway rims, which is the common language in the rule book. It's movable uh, uh, rings everyone will be required to have those by 09-10 season. And the rationale? The ball plays differently off of movable rings. Uh, rings that are being used that are not movable, if um, people hang on them or dunk them, it changes the shape and the height of the ring, whereas if people had a movable ring, they would not have those same problems. Got it. And, and before we, uh, we close here, there are points of emphasis that weren't necessarily rules changes, but things that are important to both games. I want to give each of you an opportunity to elaborate on those. So, Ed, can you kick us off with your points of emphasis? Well, we, we really haven't changed our points of emphasis, but we have redirected some of our concerns. Uh, the men's committee is still concerned about the illegal contact that's occurring around the basket, especially uh, the charge, the block, the player control foul. And what we're asking officials to do is to pay special attention and focus on those plays and call them in accordance to our written rule. The second, in terms of rough play and illegal contact, that's always been a concern. It continues to be a concern. We're concerned about the rough play off the ball. We're concerned about the rough play in cutting situations. We're concerned about the rough play in hand checking. We're concerned about the rough play in the low post with and without the basketball, but a special concern this year is going to be the rough or illegal contact uh, in, in the screening situations. Uh, another point of emphasis is palming. Our rules committee contends that that's an indefensible act. Dribbler gets a sizable advantage and the defensive player is placed at a distinct disadvantage. We'd like to see palming eradicated from our game. We're asking the officials, for now, to pay special attention in terms of palming in the front court and also in the low post. Last but not least, even though we made some improvement, the Rules Committee wants the, to continue to enforce the coaching box rule. If the, if the coach is clearly and uh, completely out of the coaching box, he will be given a warning, and any subsequent infraction after that, he will be assessed a technical foul. Going hand in hand with that is bench decorum. Any behavioral indiscretion 
That coach or any bench personnel will be assessed a technical foul without warning. Those are our points of emphasis. Okay, and how about with the women's game, Debbie? Well, we actually, uh, although bench decorum continues to be important for us, we're in our second year with the, with the point of emphasis of bench decorum. We're actually going to move away from focusing, not that we're not paying attention to that or, or it loses its importance, but our points of emphasis have moved, again, toward unsporting behavior, no matter where it occurs, but in particular with regard to player behavior. Uh, player behavior on the floor, on the bench, it doesn't matter where it is, but player behavior and also player behavior after the whistle blows. We feel like in our game there is activity by players that occurs after the whistle uh, where technical fouls are being assessed and there was an increase in technical fouls of, in, in, on players this year as compared to last year. So we want to focus on player behavior before and after a whistle blows regardless of where they are on the floor. Uh, secondly, we want to look at contact on the ball handler dribbler. We feel like that for the women's game to be played, we need to increase scoring and whenever there's so much contact on the ball handler dribbler, it inhibits the free movement that our game is intended uh, to have and decreases scoring. So we want to free up the ball handler dribbler, but we don't want to um, protect the ball handler dribbler so much that she is allowed then to create some contact. and. So we're going to look at contact not only on the ball handler dribbler, but by the ball handler dribbler. And then lastly, we're going to keep traveling as a point of emphasis because we feel like that although we've gotten better, um, that as we continue to educate people on what traveling is, then it decreases the advantage that the ball handler dribbler may gain uh, from taking advantage of a situation by violating the traveling rule and then gaining an advantage over the defense. It's kind of like what Ed said about palming. It's just indefensible if you're going to be permitted extra steps or extra space, uh, which is a violation. Before we go, Ed has a final message. Thank you, Josh. Uh, this year, Hank Nichols has retired as the National Coordinator of Officials. The Rules, the Rules Committee commends the officials and the leadership that has been provided by Hank in terms of making our game a better game. He will be missed. Okay, well I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Remember you can always check NCAA online for more information about rules changes. The season is just around the corner. 2008-09 is coming up. I'd like to thank Debbie Williamson and Ed Billick for joining us.